They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. But you just can't get into it because they would never understand. What is up guys and we are back with another video and Genshin just tweeted out the final version update notice which has all the details that you need to know and we're going to be covering it all in this video. So I haven't taken a look at this yet but there are some things that I really hope they address. The first one being what I showed at the beginning of the video where Yomiya missed all of her auto attacks. I just hope they somehow address that. Another thing is I hope they improve the drop rates of the samurais because those handguard drops are absolutely ridiculous. Like I can kill three of them and get like one drop, which is which is crazy because every other enemy has decent drops. You know, it doesn't take that long because I've been farming every day since Inazuma's dropped and I barely have enough handguards to max out Raiden as well as her weapon, which is crazy because it's like almost been a month. So those drop rates, I really hope they touch it. But let's go ahead and just jump into it. Okay, so the very first thing is we're going to be getting two new islands. I do have a love-hate relationship with this mechanic that they roll out the islands slowly. I do like the idea of not rushing content and finishing everything and then having this giant dry spell. But at the same time, I'm not a fan of waiting to farm for characters that are coming out. Like all the future characters that are coming out, such as Raiden, Kokomi, Sarah, you really can't farm them until the patch drops. Which I know isn't the biggest problem, but at the same time, I wish like at least the specialties were available on the other islands. I kind of wish they had the same approach that they did with the islands before Inazuma, where they already had Kazuo's materials, that way you could farm him, and then they had the same materials later on. Okay, so we have two new domains. I'm assuming the first one's gonna be the boss fight because it requires you to finish the Archon quest and it's called Duel Before the Throne. And the second domain looks like it's just gonna be one of those domains with Primo Gems and all those other materials that you just do once. So we do have the new fishing system. Honestly, I'm just excited to get the new weapon. Aside from that, I don't think I'm gonna be fishing that much, but it is a cool thing that they added. We already knew what characters were coming, being Raiden, Sarah, Kokomi, and Aloy, so that should be really exciting. And while we're on the characters, I quickly wanna talk about the character banner. Honestly, I'm super surprised that they made this banner this good. And reason being that a lot of people are gonna pull for Raiden just because she's an Archon, and she's just gonna have so much hype behind her regardless of if she's even trash. She's still gonna have a lot of people pulling for her. And the fact that she's getting paired with a brand new four star character, and Sucrose and Shangling, both are which great supports. I think this is gonna be a really good banner. Obviously, if you don't need any of these characters, it doesn't matter. But speaking from a general perspective, I think this banner is really, really good. But let's go ahead and talk about the weapon banner next. And then when we get to the banner, let's go ahead and start with the four stars. The four stars are pretty decent. We have the Witsith, we have the Sack Bow, we have the Felonious Lance, as well as the Lion's Roar. I would say these are pretty good weapons overall. But then lastly, we have the Bell, which is the worst weapon in the game. So they obviously have to throw it on here. Again, I think this is on the better end of the four star lineups aside from the Bell. But then when we come to the five stars, this is where a lot of people have a lot of complaints. And that's because we have Raiden's signature weapon, which obviously is going to be the best weapon for Raiden. But the thing with Raiden's weapon is it's specifically designed for Raiden. So until we get to test it, I'm not sure how this is going to perform on other characters and how it competes with other pole arms such as the Staff of Homa as well as the Jade Spear. Now when it comes to the Claymore, there are some things I want to clarify because a lot of people have some misconceptions. The very first thing is this Claymore in terms of main DPS value is better than the Wolf's Gravestone and that's because putting on a shield is a lot easier than getting the enemy below 30% HP in order to activate its passive which is what the Wolf Gravestone does. The problem is we don't have like a 5 star Homa like or Jade Cutter like crit rate crit damage Claymore. As soon as that comes out, it's going to severely outclass the Unforged and it's going to outclass the Unforged more than it's going to outclass the Wolf's Gravestone. And that's because the Wolf Gravestone can also be put on supports. That way when you do get below 30% HP, you can quickly switch in, get the proc and leave. Whereas the Unforged, yes, it does better as a main DPS Claymore, but as soon as a better Claymore comes out, you can toss the Unforged out of the window. Aside from that, it's still a really good Claymore, especially if your main DPS uses a Claymore, but I just wanted to give you guys my perspective. Okay, and then next up we have the new event. I'm actually super excited for this event. It's kind of similar to the Misty Dungeon that you did with Albedo and his harem, but this time you have separate teams of two characters that you get to choose, and it gives you trial characters, so you can try out characters that you don't have. So I'm super excited about this. So it looks like we also have the login event, Downside is this doesn't start until the 28th, which is after Raiden leaves. So you're not going to be getting your 10 fates to use for Raiden. 100% Mihoyo did this on purpose because they know people want Raiden and they want you to spend money if you can. So I'm not really surprised that they did this. Then we have the new quest as well as the new monsters. Senora, I'm super excited to fight a new boss. I wonder if they're going to increase the 30 resin cost for bosses because right now it's at three bosses. 
Are they going to keep it at three or are they going to increase it with Sonyori coming out? So it looks like we're going to be getting a bunch of new stuff like recipes, name cards, animals, and fish. So that's super cool. The new abyss is actually looking kind of scary because this corrosion effect goes through shields and attacks your HP directly. So no more Zhongli for the win. That's going to be interesting. And as far as the buff goes, it looks like every time you use your burst, you get an attack percent increase. So it's kind of gearing towards Raiden because she wants to spam burst all the time with all the other party members. And for those of you who do spend money, we are going to be getting the top up reset. What that is, is basically the first time you purchase your top up or Genesis crystals, you get double the amount. But now they're resetting it. That way, the next time you purchase a Genesis crystal, you're going to get the double amount again. Now, so far, none of these changes seem impressive until it got to number three right here. This is awesome. I've been actually hoping for this. I don't know if it was a bug or not. Sometimes when you have like Noel shield up or Beto shield up and you're in the middle of casting your burst, you're not supposed to be able to take damage but your shield still took damage. And I noticed this, especially for Beto, when I used her burst with C1, her shield would instantly go away. And that's because it would take damage, even though you're not supposed to be technically taking damage. So I think this change right here is pretty awesome. Now I got super excited here. I read the first couple words, optimize the character's skill to lock on. And then it turns out it's just about the mechanical array. So kind of disappointing. It doesn't look like they're going to have a Yomiya fix anytime soon. Uh, removing the Nobushi skill to jump back. Okay, so they are nerfing the characters of Inazuma because they like to move around so much. But it looks like the drop rates are staying the same. And they are reducing the weight of the Samurais. I don't know what they were eating, but man, those guys did not move. Especially if you use Venti's Burst, they just didn't move. They just stood there. So they are secretly buffing Venti and the Nemo characters and helping them out a bit. Because the Inazuma enemies, especially compared to Leeway and Mondstadt enemies, are a lot harder. Okay, and then it just looks like a bunch of optimizations. So it looks like they didn't really address the two things I wanted. But hey, the shield thing I'll take. Again, I'm going to keep spamming Mihoyo until they address that. Who knows if they ever will. But it's always good to try. Overall, I'm super excited for this. The new banner looks absolutely amazing. The weapon banner, I'm still going to be pulling for because, you know, I'm going to be raiding in main. I'm an Archon simp, so I'm excited for that as well. Let me know what you guys think of the update. It's only a day away. I'm super excited. Let me know your feedback down below. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time.